<laughs> yes, it's Monday and I need to wake up and get ready for the week. How are you all doing? How was your weekend? I kind of took the weekend off, spent some time with my grandson and family, but I'm ready to talk about all things insulin resistance, actually about your health. So let's, let's step it back a minute because I think we get confused or maybe I've gotten off track in sharing um, what's, why, I'm, why I'm even here. Like, look, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I am not a nutritionist. I'm a woman who's just like everybody else. I just got really sick and I struggled for years to figure out why I was sick. Doctors kept telling me your A1C is normal. Your blood glucose is normal. Your lipids are normal. And so I was like, well, then why am I suffering with all these things? Why am I gaining weight? Why do I have brain fog? Why do all my joints hurt? Why is my stomach growing out of control? Why are my you know, teeth bleeding and my ears ringing and my eyesight failing? All of these things that seemed random and unconnected or, or disconnected from each other, in the end, ended up being completely connected. And the issue is, that it all linked to this thing called insulin resistance. Now for me, how I discovered it, how I got here was because in being sick, in having blood work and saliva work and, and urinalysis and 24 hour urine tests and CAT scans and x-rays and, and MRIs and all this stuff going on to try and figure out why I was failing on every corner of my health in desperation I thought I'd tried everything. I did keto, I did veganism, I went gluten-free for a while, like a couple of years, and I was admittedly feeling better, but it wasn't fixing everything. And then right here on social media, I stumbled across this system that promised to uh, help me with my diabetes. By that time I had been diagnosed with diabetes, and so I thought I've tried everything else. It has a 90-day money-back guarantee. Um, I'm going to do it like it's, it's, it's like more than I can afford at the time, but I'm going to try it because something has to give. I have, you know, as we get to a point, maybe you're there, maybe you're not. But for me, I got to a point where I realized that my health was impacting my family. My, my kids were having to take care of me at an early age. I wasn't sure that I was going to be around or be effective as a grandparent for my child, my grandchildren. That's not the life I wanted to live. I didn't want to think about, I can't get up and down and play with my grandkids. I, I might not even be here for them as they graduate, which was a real fear for me with the way my health was going. And so I gave it a shot. And now two years later, I will never go back because not only did it reverse my diabetes, and I can say reverse my diabetes because I don't have any numbers that would indicate that I'm diabetic. All of my numbers are in normal range. Um, my everything has changed. Even my hypertension, which was running about 180 over 150 every single day, has gone back to normal. And I'm not on any medication. So if you're on metformin or Ozempic or Monjaro or any of those things and your numbers are normal, you're managing this dietary disorder and let's not let's not make any bones about it uh insulin resistance at its core i gotta fix this is a dietary disorder so why are we why are we adding medications to a dietary disorder to something that is is really and i'm not talking about you are horrible because you eat the wrong things i'm talking about the fact that the food that we're being given is not what our body needs and so what are we supposed to do when we're in this environment when our body's not getting what it needs and we're getting sick and medical professionals aren't able to help us or they're continuing to give us pills and, and one pill leads to another pill, leads to another symptom, leads to another pill, leads to more ill health. And all of a sudden you're spending hundreds of dollars a month on pills that aren't fixing the problem. They're managing it because your numbers look okay, but the problem isn't taken care of. So when I say I reversed my diabetes, it's because I'm not just managing it, I'm living it. I'm not on any medications. I've lost 50 pounds. Um, I'm in menopause, so I still have some hormonal stuff going on. But uh, my, my blood pressure, more importantly, more importantly to me than my weight, although I love having the excess weight off, um, is the fact that my blood pressure is normal, that I'm not waking up every night 
thinking that I really need to make, like, I got, I got my, um, my final wishes in order and which we should all have anyway. Right. But when this is the prevalent thought in your mind of like, I want my living will done. I want, um, I want all of these things done because I don't know from night to night what's going to happen because my blood pressure was so out of control and because I was in so much pain and because I knew my body was failing at every level. I don't have that fear anymore. My kids now have the surety of knowing where, where everything is, what's going on, but I don't have to lay awake at night what, worrying that it's, it might be the last time I saw my grandkids or that I'm going to leave them the burden of me not being here. So it's way more than just weight. I know we all tend to look at weight. I, in fact, I was talking with a wonderful woman last night and she um, has been off, often on the system that I'm on and she admits that it works. She just hasn't been consistent, but she was so focused on her weight as, as the, uh, measure of whether she was feeling healthy or not, whether, whether her health was there and, and how she was going to help others. You guys, the weight is a symptom of so much else going on in your body. So if you start to look at the fact that you have excess weight on, let's step back and understand that it's not just about that, that you're uncontrolled in what food you put in. How about that? The food is not feeding you well. It's causing hormonal imbalances because weight, excess weight or or even not enough weight is generally a hormonal imbalance. It's not all calories in, calories out. Um, so we need to start paying attention to the hormones. And why I talk about insulin is because it's a primary hormone that regulates everything else, or I shouldn't say regulates, it affects every other hormone in your body. So when insulin is out of control and insulin is out of whack, it's too much, then we have all of these other hormonal problems. In fact, this week I'll be talking about reproductive health, like PCOS, erectile dysfunction. We'll talk about menopause. I'll talk about a number of things. I'm going to try and get back to the way I used to deliver stuff. And we'll be talking a little bit about intermittent fasting this week and why it works. Yes, even for women and why it is actually so important for women to be doing some intermittent fasting um, because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Now, I'm just one voice in a big C, right? So if you resonate with what I say, take it and run with it. If you don't resonate with what I say, if you don't resonate with the information that I give you, then fine, go find someone you resonate with and find your health there. I'm just here to help out people who are searching and trying to get answers. So um, I'm going to show you guys a picture of me from two years ago and a picture of a, a pictures of a few other people. Um, there are so many more people than this, but it's, it's just really hard for me to keep up with all those pictures. So look at, let's do this. Let's get this picture up and rolling. Okay. I flipped it and I flipped it right, right back. Didn't I? There we are. So this was me two years ago, you guys. Um, that was right after I'd gotten the diagnosis of diabetes, but I had been gaining weight. I'm going to clean this. That looks better. Okay. This was, I had been gaining weight before I ever got diagnosed with diabetes. I was in pain. My blood pressure was out of control. I couldn't go up and down stairs. If I had, like, if I had to go to a building that had stairs and it didn't have um, an elevator, I would guaranteed avoid it. In fact, I was embarrassed because I would go to the gym and need to take the stairs to get the second to the second story where the workout equipment that I needed to use was because it was so painful to go up and down stairs. So here I am at a gym taking an elevator up to go to work out. And when you looked at me from the outside, outside of that, I was carrying some extra weight. You wouldn't have guessed all of the dysfunction and the joints that were failing and everything else that was going on inside. So five months it took to go from the picture on the left to the picture on the right without medications just by adding a tea in the morning and a pre-meal drink before I eat anything to help deal with the food system that is causing this kind of illness. And it's not just me. So um, Alexis has gone from a size 14 to a size six. Um, her concern was to keep diabetes away because she had so many family members who had diabetes and she didn't want to be giving her children the same burden I was just talking about. And then this, we're just going to say MO, um, in menopause, she's now lost 47 pounds. 
but her body composition has drastically changed as she's lost fat and allowed her body to put on lean tissue. And she feels much better. She breathes better. She, her voice sounds different. She's happier. It's so much more than just the weight. And when we talk about this too, I want to make sure that we know that this doesn't just apply to people. People are like, but I don't have diabetes. I'm not overweight. Well, do you know that you can have insulin resistance and still be healthy and fit? This is a good friend of mine, Christy. She's a personal trainer. She works out continuously. She's a professional bodybuilder. In the picture on the left, she was having some bloating and some swelling and nobody knew that she was suffering with diabetes and that her doctor was telling her if she didn't get her stuff under control, that she wasn't going to be around in the next couple of years for her family. Then there's Jason, who's now lost 167 pounds, but overcome hypertension, hyperlipidemia, sleep apnea, chronic fatigue, chronic pain. He's gotten his eyesight back. He's has he's just a different man altogether now. Cindy has lost almost 120 pounds now in just over a year. Um, so it's not just guys that are able to lose the weight. Hey, Jason, I know that guy too. <laughs> Oh, you snuck in and heard me talking about you. So, Jason, why don't if you if you have time, hon, would you just tell them what was going on with you? So, um, and then I will read it out for Facebook, YouTube. Jason is over on TikTok. Um, he has an amazing story. He's such he has such an impactful story. And then we talk about Karen. Who look? At, I, I'm going to stop for a second because I love to talk about this part. Cindy has lost almost 120 pounds. But when we look at her numbers that I was talking about earlier, her A1C was 5.9, pre-diabetic, just barely pre-diabetic. Um, it's now 5.5. Her hypertension is gone, her hyperlipidemia, her inflammation, her brain fog, and her neuropathy. Those are all signs of insulin resistance. Yes, her A1C indicates it, but the hypertension, hyperlipidemia, inflammation, all of that are also signs of, of insulin resistance. And yet... She doesn't have that high A1C. She didn't have a high fasting blood glucose. And then here's Karen, who's lost about um, 25 pounds, not nearly as obese, looking fantastic. But look at her numbers. She was 11.5, and she's now down to 6.5. She's lost a ton of inches. Her sleep apnea is gone. Her heartburn has gone. Her chronic fatigue, her brain fog, and her mental health. So... When I talk about weight loss, I like to talk about this. I want you guys to understand something with weight loss. How does Karen, how is she? It's black. You can't see anything. Should be able to. Um, so the difference between Karen and Cindy is likely something called, huh? Jason, are you here? Can you see anything? Can somebody type in if you can see? Thank you, Cynthia. Over on TikTok, I guess they can't see. So, um, okay. So, our queen, it, it must be your camera or something. Um, all right. So, back to Cindy and Karen. So, remember, Cindy had a lot of weight and her A1C wasn't that bad. Karen had a little bit of extra weight and her A1C was horrible. So how does that happen? There's this thing with fat cells, you guys, fat cells. People, some doctors will tell you that you have the same fat cells that you're born with. You never gain more, you never, you never lose them. They're just there and they fill or deplete. And how many of you guys have heard that? Because that's the story I was told, that I, I have the same fat cells I was born with and I'm just filling them up or depleting them and that, um, that's the story. I get fat. I'm not actually creating new fat cells. None of that. Well, if you've been told that, that's only true for about half of the population. So your fat cells can be either hyperplastic or um, hypertrophic. Okay. So hyperplastic, we're going to talk about that in a second. Hypertrophic is what the doctors have been telling you about, that you have the same amount of fat cells, they're just getting really big or they're shrinking, getting big or shrinking. Hyperplastic fat cells means, hey, here's a fat cell that's starting to get full and it's like, ooh, I need some help. So it creates another one. Hyperplastic fat cells are like little bunny rabbits in your body. So somebody like Cindy doesn't have 
um, blood sugar spilling out into her blood system because her fat cells are likely replicating and creating more and more space for that store that's that, that uh, glucose or, or energy we're going to say energy in the system to be stored whereas Karen likely was more hypertrophic so her fat cells were just either growing or shrinking and as they grew to a point that they said I can't take anymore then her blood sugars her sugar spilled back out into her blood and she became diabetic I hope that makes sense you guys so don't just think that hey i just have the same fat cells and i can't grow more this is one of the reasons why i do not like those medications and you guys it just makes my heart sad but i know i can't reach everybody hopefully i reach some people but to all the people who are like oh i'm on that drug this drug that drug monjaro trulicity and i've had a number of people come in and say um that they were on it and it worked great for them but they're not understanding the risks and what's happening. So one of the things that's happening with those drugs is they are creating this environment of being hyperplastic in your fat cells. So your numbers may be coming down. There's a number of reasons those numbers come down. Not a scientist can't explain all of them right now. But what's happening is you're increasing fat cells. And so there's more storage place. And of course, your numbers are going to come down because... There's more places to store it. Now, why are people losing weight while this is happening? Well, because um, there's also an, a factor of them that makes you feel a little bit nauseated to make you feel like you don't want to eat. That feeling, according to scientist Dr. Bickman, says that that feeling goes away in about two years. Now you have excess fat cells and you have hunger back. And so what do you think is going to happen? And I've heard time and time again, People who've been on these medications in the beginning, they're like, wow, this worked really great. And, I, you know, it saved my life and it did all these things and they feel great because they lost the weight. But then a few years later, when their hunger comes back and now they've done damage to their kidneys, their liver. I had a, a gal who um, lost her thyroid over the, those medications. You guys, they're just damaging. Why would you do it? So that was a tangent. But look, you guys, really what it's about is making sure that you understand why why we're all getting sick. So if you're going into doctors, if you're going in, or maybe you're not even going into a doctor, maybe you're just so freaking frustrated with the, the healthcare system, with the answers that you're getting, or the lack of answers that you're give, getting that you've given up. And look, I was there too. So when I was that, that 270 pound woman, was I eating perfectly at that point? No. Because I had given up. I was like, if I eat perfectly, if I if I eat less than 30 grams of carbohydrates a day, when I work out all the time and I'm doing all these things, I'm not losing weight. Um, so I'm just going to eat what I want because it doesn't matter. I don't know how many of you guys feel like that. Like, it doesn't really matter. I just, what it, whatever I do, it's really not working and I'm stuck and I'm struggling and I can't figure this out and nobody's helping me. They're just telling me to lose weight Um you know, count your calories, exercise more. You guys, I was working out six days a week, three hours a day and eating less than 50 grams of carbohydrates a day, sometimes less than 30. And I couldn't drop the weight and I wasn't, more importantly, my blood pressure wasn't going down. So what I'm talking about is a system that I do, the system that I do, looking for my packets, you guys, it's the tea that I'm drinking right now. The tea that I'm drinking right now, I have every morning. This is real food product, so it's take it helped me get off of all my medications, and it's just real food. So, I get I get questions all the time, and they're valid, good questions. Can I take my vitamins and minerals when I do this? Can I take my medications? Is it going to interfere with my medications? No, no, and no. Or can, I mean, yes, yes, and yes, because it it doesn't interfere with anything. It's real food products. So, if you're having your apple in the morning, is that interfering with your medication. Nope. Um, this is not apples, but so there's a tea that I have in the morning. It gives me mental clarity. It gives me physical energy. It helps me just wake up and be ready for the day without giving me crashes, without giving me jitters, without having me feeling addicted to anything. Although I don't know, I, I really love my tea. Yesterday I had a day and I, I just didn't drink my tea and I thought, you know what, I'm going to see what I feel like if I don't drink the tea today because it's been two years, right? I was hungry all day. I didn't have as much energy. I was feeling more frustrated. There's a lot of mental health components in the tea, not just um, 
weight components or A1C, you know, things that are helping with your blood sugars. So I drink the tea in the morning, which is what I'm having now. I do about a 16 hour fast and then, and a 16 hour fast, you guys, is so easy. Like I ate my dinner yesterday about 5 p.m. So at 5 a.m. I was at 12 hours. It's almost nine now. So ta-da, I'm at 16 hours. Yeah, Jason says he didn't drink his tea yesterday and he was mega bitchy too. And did I miss your whole story, Jason? I asked you to tell it and then did I just not even read it? There's Jason. I got to come back and see if Jason told me, told everybody his story. He probably is like, honey, I'm tired of typing this out. You should just, um, Jason, you should, you should just get some, some prompts and, uh, copy paste, honey. Um, okay. So yeah, when I don't drink my tea, I know I'm just hungrier. I don't have as much energy. Um, it, it really does help with all of those things. So I'm already right at 16 hours of fasting, not really hungry. I will um, have my meal after after this live, and then I will wait six hours and have my second meal, and that's my day. My grandson was over, so we did a little bit more snacking, so I just had an extra. Now, the other piece of it, the, so the, uh, the second piece of the whole system, the protocol is this. It's a pre-meal drink that I have 10 minutes before I eat, and this if you drink it, and one thing uh, a friend of mine does is he sets a timer when he drinks it. I find that amazing because I have ADD, so I either wait too little time and get impatient or wait too long. So setting a timer is great. 10 minutes. Why 10 minutes? This fills up your gut. It creates a gel-like substance in your gut that's going to start to help you feel full before you eat. But even more importantly, it, that gel-like matrix is going to surround your carbs and your fats and slow down how they deliver into your system so you're not having those spikes. So every time I eat anything, I have a pre-meal drink and that helps me with keeping everything under control. So I don't know what happened here. Huh. I have issues. Okay. Yes, we all know I have issues. All right, there we go. So where to, where to get the tea? You're going to go to my profile here on TikTok. Just tap on my picture up at the top. And you guys, it's not just the tea. You're going to get coaching from me. You're going to get help from me. Um, you're never left alone. You can access me as little or as much as you like. But right under those red lights, you'll see my comments are always talking about right under the red lights. So right under those red lights or this link, you're going to click on it. Now, over on YouTube and Facebook, it's going to look like this. If you're on um, Facebook, or this is YouTube, sorry, you'll see the link there. And on Facebook, you're going to just scroll down on my Vibrant Living with Misha page, and you'll see the link. Either way, you're going to get to this link right here, and that will t take you to where to order. So the system I use is right here. Click on that. And that's going to take you to this page. Now, Lee, it's really important that it has my name at the top. I'm an authorized distributor. You're getting the 90-day money-back guarantee. You're getting a low-price guarantee, and you're getting a quality guarantee. So it's triple tested. If you don't purchase through an authorized distributor like myself, you're not getting all those guarantees. Amazon, eBay, Walmart, you don't get any of that because there are no there are no authorized distributors there. And you always end up paying more. Um, people have said, oh, I paid less, and then I've checked it out, and I'm like, nope, you paid almost twice as much. Um, they, they have a lot of deceptive practices to make you think it's, it's less, but it's never less there. So um, you're getting the tea in the morning that you can have hot or cold. I choose to drink mine cold, but as it gets colder out, as fall is settling in, I'll switch over to drinking it hot. So in the summertime, I really love the lemon, when, it, when I'm drinking it cold in the winter time, I love the lemon ginger. It just has that little bit of bite. And so um, they're the same. Neither one of them have lemon in it. So that's just the natural flavor of the tea, hot or cold. And then you're going to get 60 of the pre-meal drink. And you get that right now in or lime or orange. I keep waiting. Mine is should be here because I can't wait to show you guys the new packaging. I, I keep holding up the old packets, but the new packets, because, you know, I always have an extra one around. 
The new packets are much narrower, so they fit better in a water bottle. Uh, it's important to me because I've used it long enough that I know when I'm out and traveling and I have one of those regular water bottles, what that looks like when I'm trying to get that wide packet in. Anyway, choose between lemon, lemon, ginger, lime, or orange. Okay, lemon, lemon, ginger for tea, lime, or orange for the pre-meal drink. I would just leave it where they already have it selected as the lemon and the fresh lime because the fresh lime is a limited edition. You guys, it um, is about $5 a day. It's $1.59 a month if it's not on subscription, $1.54 if it is. So you save $5 a month when you put it on subscription. You get free shipping and you can cancel that at any time. But that free shipping means you're now saving about $15. So make sure you save yourself the money. Then you get this free hand mixer when you do the subscription. So there's just the benefits of it. And besides the money savings, let's talk about that in reality. Besides the money savings, one of the other things is most people are thinking, I don't know if this is going to work. And so they'll do just like a one-time subscription or a one-time order because they're like, I don't want to, you know, these companies who rope you into buying stuff for 90 days and you can't get out of it. Hey, I don't, I don't know how to say, Himanshu, Himanshu, hello, good morning. Um, so you guys, we're not like that. You can cancel it literally at any time. Five days before the next one goes out, you're going to get an email telling you that um, your, your products are about to come out. If you want to add something to it, if you want to change those flavors up, if you need to shift the date a day or two, if you need to change anything, your payment method, anything, you have time to do it before it just hits your account. So I love that the company takes care of you in that way. But most importantly of all, you're going to make sure that you have your product because I, if you're doing the system correctly and if you're suffering like I was, you, ought to, you already see how it's helping you. So I want to talk about some reality. When I started, remember, I was sick. Oh, Jason, that's a great idea. So Jason says with the pre-meal drink, remember I said it thickens up and so you wait 10 minutes. So it does get really thick if you leave it set. That's something you want to drink right away because it will start to thicken up. So if he doesn't have 10 minutes and see, I don't, Jason, you're so brilliant. Um, if he, what he does, and I've been doing this for two years. Why don't, why don't I think about that? Because I have laser vision sometimes, you guys, I get, I get like tunnel vision. All right. So Jason, what he does is he shakes it more so that it starts to thicken up. Now, instead of being like a, a liquidy drink, an orange drink or lemon drink, you got to know that when it thickens up, it's going to be more like a uh, milkshake consistency, but that's going to give it that extra um, before it gets in your gut so that you're starting to feel full before you eat and it's starting to have those actions. Great idea, Jason, by the way. Um, okay. So, I lost track of where I was at. <laughs> Does that ever happen? No. Look, so I was at this point. Oh, that's where I was at. Talking reality, talking like, let's just talk about what really happened. So two years ago when I started, remember my A1C was 7.4. It, it, that's bad, but not as bad as like the 11.4 I just showed you. Um, Jason's was at 13.3, by the way, and his is now in normal range. Um, at, as well as he's lost 167 pounds and lost the inflammation and the sleep apnea and gotten his hormones under control now too. But people will always say how, and it's a valid question, how quickly do I see results? Because you know what, when I try something new, that's what I ask too. So for me, for me, what happened was one of the things that I struggled with and I didn't even know that it was connected at the time was brain fog. I'd had, um, I'd had IQ tests done and they scored pretty high. And I had always enjoyed having this great mental acuity, this, this, this mind that just did wonders for me. But all of a sudden my mind wasn't working. I couldn't remember names. I couldn't remember places. I couldn't remember events clearly in my life. I was just struggling I had to be on meetings constantly on Zoom meetings like this, but just meetings with um, people that I was working with. And I couldn't formulate thoughts. And I was so frustrated every time I hopped on. The first thing that I noticed was I got my mental clarity back. Almost immediately, my mental clarity started coming back. 
the first day I had more energy, the first day I had less hunger, the first day I was able to go 16 hours without eating. And that was impossible for me before. Did I lose weight right away? Nope. Did I have a number of these other amazing results right away? Nope. You guys, our bodies are sick and we're in this instant grat this instant gratification life, right? So here, when you're, when you're talking with me, I'm not offering you instant gratification. I'm offering you real solutions and real answers to what's really happening and not the shot in the belly that's going to make you feel great in the moment, but cost you your health in the long run. Okay. I'm not going to do that. If I was giving you something that I thought was going to destroy your health in the long run, I couldn't even open my mouth to be here. That's, that's my personality. I get really in, excited about the things I know that are working, whether it's this or ask my kids when I, when I get excited about something in justice or something that's working, I can't shut up about it. So it was natural for me to come on and start talking about this because I didn't want people to feel like I did. But so energy was back. Mental clarity was back. But then six days in that blood pressure that was 180 over 150 and at the doctor's office, you know, even with me doing like breathing work and meditation stuff before I would go in. I don't feel like I really had white coat syndrome because I'd worked in offices and it was just like not a thing for me. But the best blood pressure we could get was 150 over 110. And the sixth day, so I got my stuff on a Saturday. I started it on Sunday. By Thursday morning, I had a doctor's appointment. We went in, the MA read my blood pressure at 126 over 84. I literally screamed in the doctor's office like a little girl. It had been my 20s, in my 20s, since I'd had a blood pressure like that. And the, the MA just looked at me and I was like, have you looked at my chart? Because you should be looking at my chart. Do you understand that the blood pressure that you just took is like way below any blood pressure that's charted in my chart? And he looked and he goes, oh, no, okay. And he, he left. And then my doctor, who I used to work for, um, came in and I was like, look, look at my chart. Look at, the, look at the vitals. And she looked and she goes, wow, how did that happen? And she didn't trust her MA. So she made him come in and redo my blood pressure. And it still came out at 126 over 84. And she was like, Misha, what did you do? And so I told her about the system. And she goes, okay, I'm going to trust you do what you need to do. Let's see how this goes. Cause she had tried tons of things for me to get my blood pressure back and um, it wasn't working. I was on dual therapy. We had cycled through a number of medications. I can't even remember them all now. I don't even care anymore. But at that point in time, I was on 10 different medications for my diabetes, for my blood pressure, for my swelling, for all of the things going on in my body, my pain. Then that was, that was those 10 medications, but I was also on three different medications uh, hydro, Norco, and Gabapentin for all the muscle pain. So it was actually closer to 13 different medications that I had. And I was cycling between um, high doses of ibuprofen, um, Norco, uh, hydro, and Gabapentin at night just to try and be able to sleep because I was in so much pain. I don't do any of that now. Every once in a while, like the barometric pressure changed and we had some pretty heavy rains and all of that's changing. And so I was like hurting for a few days. I've had three joint replacements, but that's a typical, right? I don't have those pains. Part of it is because I lost 50 pounds. Part of it is because the inflammation is out of my body. The, the tea and that pre-meal drink that I talked about, they did that for me. So I will remember also the first summer that I took it, I was a little despondent because I hadn't lost weight. At a month in, um, I got a call that was like, how are you doing? And I'm like, I'm doing okay, but I haven't lost any weight. And I'm going to tell you, just all honesty, I was a little bit pissed off. Like two things I needed done from the system. I needed to get my diabetes under control and I needed to lose weight because I had to have a surgery and the doctor wouldn't do it if I didn't lose weight. And I was so resistant to losing weight that it brought me to tears in her office. So at a month in, I hadn't lost any weight and I was, okay, I'm just, yeah, I was pissed off. I'm like, what the hell? You promised me this was going to work. And so um, I got told to just give it time. And then we went over some of the things that were going right. And then I started realizing, okay, yeah, there's a lot that's been going on that's good. 
The other conversation we had is this. I hear some people saying, well, I'm not losing weight. Other people are saying I'm losing a ton of weight. Everybody is different, right? The system is not forcing you into doing something. Your body's not being forced to do something that it wouldn't naturally do. So because we're all different, um, we all react a little differently and in our own time. Remember, there's not only the hyperplastic, hypertrophic kind of weight loss or weight gain, but there's, you know, like your hormones, where are the rest of your hormones at? What's going on with you in other ways? Have you had a lot of injuries that has caused a lot of inflammation? I've had head injuries. I've had like 20 broken bones across my body. Now, uh, admittedly, two of those were my nose. That's cartilage. So um, it's probably 18, but I have had over 130 inches of scarring from surgeries and injuries across my body. My weight loss is going to look different than somebody who's not ever suffered any of that trauma. My insulin resistance is going to look different than somebody who's not suffered any of that trauma. You guys, surgeries and trauma re, um, hype up your, uh, your propensity for insulin resistance. The more injuries you have, the more trauma your body's been through, the more likely you are to be insulin resistant. And I think that's important to address because some people just don't understand that, hey, I've had a lot happening and they think, oh, it's just because I've had these surgeries. It's just, well, yeah, it is, but that's causing you to be more insulin resistant. So the better we can take care of that, the better the inflammation comes down. Your gut microbiome changes. Your brain function starts to change as in you can um, produce and uptake dopamine more correctly. The neurons start to fire more correctly. And there's a uh, Again, not a scientist, so I may get part of this wrong. I can see it in my head. But there's a space in between the, the nerve pathways, the neurons. Um, and there's uh, chemicals that are supposed to be produced inside the pathway. With insulin resistance, it's being produced outside. So it's creating this matter in a place that it shouldn't be. And so it's creating misfiring of your brain cells um, or neurons. So you're having brain fog. Um, it can cause things like Alzheimer's, anxiety, Parkinson's-like symptoms. Um, all of those things are also linked. So why do I love talking about insulin resistance? For all those reasons. If you guys have suffered with any of that and you understood that you could not have to be taking all the medications, then you might want to do it. And all right, I'm going to address this because because it came up to my to my field of reality right now. So a couple of the things I hear all the time are, it's just too expensive. It's $5 a day. It's $5 a day. I spent more than $5 a day on chips and, and uh, candy bars and, and whatever to try and keep my energy up. Okay. I spent way more than $5 a day. 10 different medications was about $100 a month in co-pays. Now, if I didn't have insurance or if I had some other crazy medications, um, we didn't have me on crazy ones because I couldn't afford them. Some people I've heard are doing regimens for their weight loss, for their diabetes. They're spending $600 a month or more on all these random things. So people will say, oh, just do berberine and this and this and this and this. And if you're like, if you're like me, like I had spreadsheets of everything I had to do in a day to try and, and manage my insulin resistance, my diabetes, and it wasn't working. So I traded those spreadsheets in because I would forget it was so much. Not only that, I had this big pill box. I think I've thrown away the pill box that had like four compartments and each compartment was crammed full of stuff I was taking in a day to try and manage. So when I added up the cost of all of those, it was well over $300 a month that I was, you know, piecemealing together to try and keep my health together. I traded that all in for a tea in the morning, a pre-meal drink before I eat anything and about $5 a day. So there's that. Now, people will talk about the fiber and the tea. It's not just fiber. Um, it's a scientifically designed complex of fibers. Every fiber in every food has a different action in the body. Why fibers? I haven't even talked about that this morning. The fibers help mediate the sugars as they go into your system. Some fibers are helping clean you out. Some fibers, I'm not a fiber expert. I really probably should read more about it. But 
every fiber from every food has a different action in your body. So you could be sitting down having a salad before you eat every time and thinking I'm doing a really good job or just having a salad altogether and feeling like this is, is getting my fiber in, but it's not a variety of fibers. It's not that blend of there's three specific fibers and I will, I will make sure I know them better hopefully by the end of this week, but there's three specific fibers that help slow down the delivery of glucose into your system or sugar or even simpler energy into your system that's causing this insulin problem. They're all combined in here. They're not found in those other over-the-counter um, fibers that people talk about. So do those other ones help you poop? Do they help with that? Yes, but they're not really addressing this, this, this. So, um, yeah, that's the, there's an importance in having the right tools at hand. So let's talk about the tools. If I was, my dad was a welder. He was a mechanic. He couldn't do woodwork with shit. So if I handed my dad woodworking tools, could he get stuff done with his mechanics? He could figure out how to make it work for sure. Would it take him way longer? Would the job he did be near as good? No. But if he had the proper tools and a welder, I don't care what welder, he could do a damn good job. He had the right tools for the job he was doing. Now, he couldn't take his welder and go build a house, not a, a traditional stick built house. That's what's happening. You guys got to think about the tools we're using, and you have to have the right tools for the job you're trying to do. So when other people are talking about just this fiber, just that fiber, it's the wrong tool for this job. Wrong tool for the right job, right? So we're trying to get to the job of, of taking care of our insulin in our system, of regulating the energy in our system, and those just are not made for that. Now, um, some of them have some marketing that says, oh, it reduces your A1C and all, all of these claims, but we have a science website where our products are tested um, and they've had some efficacy. So not only do they say, we think this is going to work because this is so, <laughs> so some of those other companies are like, oh, there's all this science out there that says this works. So we're going to throw this together and we're going to grab on the back of that science and we're going to say that we're doing that job. But this company is actually creating the science that's creating the the effect that we're looking for and in fact the company about a year ago decided that they're no longer going to be dealing with all of the other issues and we started to narrow down our product offering because they're now um, solely science solely focusing in on metabolic health so if it has to do with metabolic health um, their scientists are diving in looking at those things i know there's some new things coming out um, but the tea and the, the pre-meal drink, I've heard a number of people, there's a, a wonderful man who's a pastor who also talks about the product and, you know, he says it's only been in the U.S. for three years. That's not true. It's been in the U.S., the company's been in the U.S. since 1903. It's just that there's not been a lot of people like me and others out talking about it. It's just that we have been fighting big pharma um, it's been more than 15 years that these two products, one of the pre-meal drink is closing in on 20 years. Guess what else came out about the time this came out? Metformin. So when this came out and it was, it had science and it had studies that said that it could help with diabetes, with the A1C, with the blood glucose and all of that. Why do you think nobody ever heard about it if it's so good and it's not causing damage and it's, and it's uh, just a better route for people to manage their diabetes and their weight. Why? Probably big pharma. So if you're a person like me who doesn't want to be on medications, who doesn't like to have all of that stuff going on, that stuff being all the negative things that happen. And I say that stuff because I worked in medical for so long and um, I saw on the back end what happened when people would come in and be frustrated because they had so many medications they were taking, trying to manage all of their symptoms. And um, it was devastating. They were frustrated. And some of them just had to go on welfare just to have their medications paid for. 
that was sad. Um, there's a whole side of that system I don't even want to get into. You know, doctors doctors just don't get paid the same. So they have limited spots for welfare patients and welfare patients or, or uh, Medicare patients get really kind of pushed aside unless they're, they're a really well-established patient with, um, with that physician. So that's another whole story. But here's the thing. I chose the route of not having any medications in my home, of not having any of that happening. I have some Tylenol and I have some um, Benadryl because I do have some allergies still from time to time. That's it because I don't have other medications. I don't even have NyQuil and, and all of that in my house because number one, I really don't get sick much um, because my gut microbiome has changed. So it's not just about the weight. It's about my overall health. Um, two years ago, year and a half ago, uh, I was staying at my daughter's house helping her and the whole family came down with, I think it's safe to say the word now, I got booted once before, but my they, they all came down with COVID because my granddaughter got it from the daycare she was in. So five of us in the household, um, all four of them got sick. I'm the only one who didn't come down with that virus and didn't get sick from it. And yes, I was tested. So how does that happen when you live in close proximity? Well, there's a number of things that can happen, but one of the things that I really feel like happened is by that time I had been on the system for over a year, which means my gut microbiome was getting built. So gut microbiome is just all the little bacteria, good and bad inside your gut, okay? So when your gut microbiome or all that bacteria inside your gut, gut being stomach and intestines, you're your immune cells are not created in that area, but 70% of them are housed there. So your gut is this like, your fat cells are a storehouse for energy or your gut's kind of a storehouse for just about everything else. But when those um, immune cells are impacted because there's so much of the negative and inflammatory microbiome in there, it starts to, uh, deactivates not the right word but it, it impacts how much of those immune cells and how effective they can be so you go from 70 percent to a much lesser percent now you're more likely to get colds to get those viruses to get all of that stuff my family now is all except for the little five-year-old because she doesn't have any metabolic disorder but she still drinks my tea um, they're all doing the system as well so um, me 59 years old daughter mid-30s grandchildren, uh, 13 and 14 are all doing the system because it's real food and it's really helped my, uh, well, she's actually not 13 yet. She will be soon. Um, so she's 12 right now, pre-diabetic a year ago, she was, uh, pre-diabetic. She is no longer pre-diabetic. She has better moods. Now I was surprised because I've seen this little girl in the middle of summertime, tell me that she was comfortable in sweats because she was just embarrassed by her body, but she didn't want to tell anybody that. I saw a video that her mom sent me this summer and she was wearing like a shirt with no sleeves and wearing shorts and she was slim and her skin looked better. So yes, children can do it too. And that's part of why I love this. Would I ever tell my kids to take a shot in the, the belly? No. So do you need to take a probiotic with the system? You don't need to. It depends on your particular system. So for me, I take some digestive enzymes because I no longer have a gallbladder. My gallbladder got taken out as a long-term result of being insulin resistant for so long. When you're insulin resistant, it really jacks with your liver and most gallstones, the sludge that builds up in your, your gallbladder comes from um, an effect of insulin resistance. So because I was insulin resistant for so long and nobody caught it, I ended up losing my gallbladder two years ago. And so now if I don't want to have severe gastritis, um, I have to stay away from seed oils. I have to stay away from high amounts of sugar. And I do take a probiotic when I eat to help my gut digest because I just can't in the way that I used to. But a normal person, uh, you don't have to take probiotics with a system. What's happening is as you rebuild that gut microbiome with the fibers, with getting the sugar down, uh, your own 
probiotics in your system. This has prebiotics in it, so it's helping you rebuild your own natural gut flora. If you want to take them, take them, but you don't have to. Unless you're like me and don't have a gallbladder, then I would I would suggest taking a uh, some kind of a digestive enzyme or probiotic if you don't have a gallbladder. I hope that helps answer that one. Okay, guys, I am I have a ton to do today, so I'm gonna go take care of that. I'll be back about three o'clock and uh, we'll talk some more and hopefully help out answer some more questions. Lori, did you have any other questions for me before I hop off? If not, guys, I'm going to go take care of my day. By the way, I've been painting. I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn uh, uh, fluid art. I did a batch last spring, and they came out okay, but then there was problems, and I just did a batch for Halloween, blacks and purples, because I have a purple couch, and I'm in love with the art that just came out. But I'm also, while I have the mess in my house, creating a series of art for... Um, Thanksgiving and whatnot. So I'm, I'm not generally an orange person, but I really love the way this is looking. So that's part of what I'm going to do today is fill my soul. And I would suggest that you guys fill your soul too. If you didn't take the enzymes and did just the system, if, okay, crafty, if without a gallbladder, there's no way that I could just be fine without taking extra enzymes. Um, I did that and I slowly started getting worse and worse and couldn't understand. So about February of this year, everything was going really good. And then I started having severe gastritis and I couldn't figure out what was happening. Um, the gastritis happens because my body can no longer produce and store bile in the way the gallbladder holds on to bile and allows you to digest stuff later. So. Number one, I don't have the, the amounts of bile that everyone else has to break down your food now. Um, and then because of that, it just doesn't digest food in the same way. So I take some bile salts every day and then I take digestive enzymes when I eat to help because I don't have um, the same function in my body anymore. Is there a way you can chat with me personally? Lori, yes. So Let's take a look, you guys, again, on any platform. If you go, like, here on TikTok, because that's where the question is, let's take a look at that. Um, Lori, go to my profile picture up at the top. I'm trying to, and that will bring up another box. Click on it again. That will get you to my profile. Then right here, right below the red lights, is this link. Now, the link is more than just getting you to purchase. So when you click on that link, it's going to take you here. Okay. So there's a number of things in this little landing page. So my website's there. You can go read more about the products. I have a Facebook page um, on, on insulin resistance that you can join down here. I have a free ebook you can get, but right here, contact me on WhatsApp. You just get, um, you just get this link and start texting me and let me know, Lori, that you talk to me on TikTok and we'll have a chat. Okay. So crafty. So the system is, look, I don't want to be confusing about it. The system absolutely helps. Um, who doesn't, your, your doesn't have a gallbladder. Why would you be hesitant to put her on the system? I'm doing the system and I would, and I, I began by saying I would never be without it. Because without the system, it's two very different things, right? I lost my gallbladder, and, and I want you to think about this. She lost her gallbladder because she's insulin resistant, okay? So if, if her to lose her gallbladder, that means her liver is already full of fat and crap that she needs to get cleared up. And the only way to clear that up is to become more insulin sensitive. So, um, would I ever go back to being without the system? No, especially now that I don't have a gallbladder, I would never go back to being without the system. Do I add in the digestive enzymes to help my body while I'm staying insulin sensitive? Yes. The sad truth is that doctors will yank your gallbladder way too quickly. And I fell into that trap, maybe just so I could sit here and talk about it. 
but unless your gallbladder is like just completely completely jacked up time there's things that you can do that will help with those gallstones so if you have a gallstone um i can't gallstone that's there but the system can help prevent you from getting more of those gallstones and helping clear out some of the sludge that's in the gallbladder um, the system is not, I'm not saying that the system is doing that. What I'm saying is getting your A1C and your blood glucose, your insulin resistance under control so that all of those um, actions, your body is a huge machine. And if one little thing, if one little thing gets a cog, a cog in it, uh, uh, it it's, it's just going to cause uh, disarray throughout the body. So getting control of the insulin resistance Getting the insulin under control allows all of these other things start to run smoothly like they're supposed to, and that can affect your gallbladder. So, um, crafty, I would especially recommend that people who don't have a gallbladder do the system. I would especially recommend that because knowing what I know now and understanding that um, again, I'm going to say this one more time. I know sometimes I repeat myself because I just want to be make sure that people hear what I'm saying. If she's lost her gallbladder, she's already insulin resistant. She already need, has problems with her liver. And the way to get that back out is to become more insulin sensitive. Letting her stay insulin resistant is not going to help. It's going to cause her to end up, let me rephrase that. It's likely to cause her to end up with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So the system does really great with people with that because, again, we're getting the insulin under control. And I'm recommending that people don't drink fruit juice because that's a big leader to um, non-alcoholic fatty liver and all of the, the things that go along with an unhealthy liver. Okay, so Crafty, uh, you can get a hold of me and chat too about your mom if you want. Just go to that, that link. Um, and I will see you guys about 3 p.m. Lori, I'd be happy to, to text back and forth with you. And if we need to hop on a call and see what we can do with you. Okay. Have a great day, you guys.